Hello everyone and welcome to the 2023 Chainhawk Open 12 presented by Dynamic Discs. We're back at the Northside Park. Somewhat wet and soggy day here. Threat of thunderstorms. Double G opened up with a 12 stroke advantage. AJ Carey, however, some heroics in the front nine. Seeing if he can apply any pressure. The rest of the card trying to maintain see if the weather cooperates with us it hasn't been foul i'll say that much but we head into the back nine and we've got hole number 10 playing as the easiest hole on the course a must get birdie just 254 feet back averaging 2.32 so of our 42 competitors plenty of people getting the birdies in fact Around 68% of the field. Double G had to wait for a few birds to scatter because he said he wanted to land just short of the pin and then skip up next to it. And he's done just that. Nice lazy backhand for one Double G. Now going with playing the skip action. AJ Carey going out and around the outside. Well, forehand now coming from Jared Stoll, the West Side representative. Jared spends plenty of time down here in Florida, although he's originally from Michigan. And we're going to see Nick also go with the forehand and kind of just slithers behind. And he's going to be right there for birdie. No problems for AJ. <laughs> oh, smile out of Double G. I'm not sure if he was distracted or if he just got away with one and released it a little too high, but still found enough chain to drag it in there. Either way. Got yeah, three for three on the birdies and then close range. Pachuga, no problem. He's trying to battle back. Kind of a rough front nine. Big shout out to our presenting sponsor in Dynamic Discs as we head to 11. 416 feet, 127 meters. You really want to play exactly as the drone is flying right here. You're coming through this alleyway. You want to go right over these guys. Maybe check up just right side of this tree and then have it kind of come to a stop or a slowdown just as it's getting past that tree. Double G, right power, but needed it more to the right as that's going to carry off to the left. If you go deep of the pin, you can bring the water, the canal, so to speak, a ditch line into play, and that's out of bounds. Low line drive. Good edge. Two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. 22 skips. And I believe that's on the wood chips. Parked for AJ Carey. The skip straight. Good line. Needed more distance, though, ultimately. Such a compact swing that we see from Nick. And he's going to be out in double G territory. Nick, not sponsored. Plays out of the Atlanta area. I believe he's just 22. And when everything seemed to be dropping in round two, just today, barely off. Double G just perplexed. Like, why you got to do me like that? Understandable. What a roll away. And Jared's confidence, a little shake in there. Tickles a few chains, but then finds the OB ditch. Oh, 
Makes the comebacker, but turns the birdie into a bogey. And now Double G, who's been bogey-free, keeps the streak alive. Doesn't bogey in round one in shooting a 13-under on this course. Round two shoots a 14-under, no bogeys. And here we are a little ways halfway through our final round, still bogey-free. Remember, he made a par save back on hole three after going out of bounds. And like we said, basically in the chips. If you could have a potato chip or snack company sponsor you, thinking of wood chips and potato chips. I don't know. I don't like potato chips. But if you could have a snack company sponsor you, who is it? Or what's the brand of snack? That's what I need to know in the comments. Man, and believe it or not, these just come to me. These wildly insightful questions that I ask you guys just come to me on the spot. The Cool Ranch Dorito kind of connoisseur? Maybe pretzels? Maybe ace runs? AJ trying to pick up another ace on uh, his round here today. Double G does confirm he likes Rolos. And we're not talking about this disc, although he does like this too. But he likes Rolos, and he said because of the gold foil on them. And I haven't put that together yet. I don't know if he likes Goldschlager too. I'm not going to associate him as much, but right after that throw, he was talking about Rolos, the chocolates, and the gold foil. All right, again, I need to know your snack. Your snack sponsor, if it's not already Double G Jerky. All right, back to the action. Apparently we're watching golf. As that shot was happening, I was thinking about old school versus new school golf. 20 years ago, you wouldn't have seen people line up that little chip shot with a forehand. Obviously a great play, nothing wrong with it, as Nick has the comebacker now. He, okay, he went a little long in his case, but very logical, perfectly good play. But 20 years ago, only a few people would have bothered with a little forehand flick, I feel like, from that distance. It's kind of interesting how the game has changed and evolved. AJ making sure that Nick backs up, not possibly. Just in a goofy spot, blind spot of his for a distraction. And AJ, solid putter. No problem picking up another birdie. Is there another ace? I believe this was aced as well. Problems for Double G. And Austin Bates picked up the ace here. So congratulations to Austin. Three aces through the first 12 holes in the MPO field. And A.J. Carey hunting for a second ace this round. Hole 13 sets up for it. 283 feet down the tunnel. Especially if you're throwing a forehand, you want to come in just over that short PVC, have it kind of skip straight possibly, find yourself in the chains. Here's AJ. A little height. Oh, and skips just a few feet shy of the basket. Doesn't quite get up and in. Would have been his second skip pace of the round. Bread and butter, double G, no problem. Light turnover. Old school beat up mid range. Said he's had that on in his bag for the last six years since he's gone out on tour full time. Coming in a little early for Jared. Nick has had some long-range 
bids. He's connected on a few, but he's also had a few really just solid long-range bids. And Jared somewhat checked out. No problem on the comebacker. Jared started at 15 under. That's where he remains right now. So he's par for the round. AJ putting together a pretty solid round. He was asking if it was close, and I didn't think it was that close. But upon editing it, I was like, oh, yeah, that actually was pretty close to going in. Greedy SOB, just trying to collect more aces. No big deal. More more sections of the ace pot, more shares of it. <laughs> Hole 14, 264 feet, very aceable. In fact, this is going to play as one of the easiest holes on the course. Second easiest, that is. Only hole 10 is easier. 10, 14, 15, and 12. Four of the easiest five holes on the course are in this back nine. So definitely where the scoring can happen quickly. Right. Double G asking for some CTP action. And speaking of asking for action, I'm running a little, uh, I don't know, special on my Patreon. If you support me that way, thank you so much. If you're thinking about doing it, now's a good time because as soon as I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I'm going to take that date and I'm going to go back two months. If you were supporting me on Patreon, at that two-month or, or earlier time frame, you're going to be eligible to get a free disc just sent to you. I'm going to get a special 100,000 subscriber-based disc made up, and then all of my Patreon supporters, as of two months prior to that, will just get one for free, just sent to you, just like that. It's going to show up at your door. you got to give me your address. Let's not make it weird or creepy or anything, but, yeah, free disc coming your way if you've been supporting me at least up to two months prior to me getting to that 100,000. And really, coverage like this happens, and a lot of my off-season, slow-season coverage happens almost exclusively because of the support I get from my Patreon members. So it's because of you or others that are supporting me like you via Patreon that really help make this coverage happen. All right, enough of the sales pitch. Double G pitching in for birdie. Seven under through 14. Not quite as hot as his opening round here, but still a solid pace. I started playing disc golf with my family when I was eight years old. When I was 16, I got my first job as a cook at a bowling alley. And that's when I made my first batch of beef jerky. As I got better at throwing, I also got better at making beef jerky. Everyone told me they loved my jerky. After 15 years of making my beef jerky as a hobby, I decided to make it available to everyone. Double G Craft Jerky. Give it a try. You're going to love it. The main ain't wrong. It is some uh, good jerky. We head over to hole 15, 565 feet, playing back toward somewhat near the parking lot slash... Uh, the pavilion where Tournament Central is taking place here for the weekend. Big shout out to our Chainhawk Club crew members, volunteers, spotters, sponsors. So much to make this all go down as a late season PDGA A tier event. Double G with the roller eventually gets caught up as I pan over toward general vicinity of where the pin is. Really, if you penetrate anything past this initial set of trees, uh, you're going to be in probably pretty easy position to get up and down for birdie. 
this plays as the fourth easiest hole on the course. It's a par four, averaging 3.61. And even that kick, <laughs> as much as it slowed it down, that kick's still going to put him in good position. AJ won't be mad about that. Easy approach for Jared. Looks to be pretty easy for Double G. Leaves him inside 22 feet. A little more angle and work to do here for AJ. Even with the neck, that's still going to put him on the dance floor. Well, this is the neck, but... And Rain has officially picked back up enough to bust out the umbrella. Both AJ and Nick in for birdies. Double G to add to his total. He's going to move to 35 under. That's eight under on today's round. Not Jared's day. Take a short walk over to the T of 16. A very daunting tee shot here. There's OB everywhere. Of course, you see it short. This isn't so much the concern of the problem. You're easily going to clear this. Then you come on to this section, and you have to get over this little gully right there. But if you go too far deep past the basket, you can find yourself in the OB long. Double G is going to play a high spiking shot that checks up right next to the pin. Inside 20 feet. And almost identical. Copy and paste there for Nick. Well, 16 playing is the single most difficult hole on the course today. That's inbounds. Tells you something. If it's playing as the most difficult on the course relative to par, but it still has 34% birdie. So plenty of birdies to be had here. However, the likelihood for bogey or double is higher here than anywhere else. Nick in for birdie. Double G in for birdie. So he's going to put another one on the card. That's nine under for today's effort. AJ currently sitting at eight under for today. So he'll match double G at nine under. And a star frame, very impressive. Again, considering it's the most difficult hole relative to par. We head to 17, 344 feet, dead straight. The OB doesn't come into play as much on this short side as it does if you go wide to the right or possibly way off to the left or even long. That's not as likely, but wide right being the most common place. 
Double G with the honors. Oh, that's right and hits and falls into the middle of the OB. 52 holes Double G has played without a bogey and now in threat of picking up his first bogey of the weekend. Short left side for Nick. Yes, sir. Come on. AJ likes it. You know, AJ, if that would have went in and you walked right in front of my camera, I, bro, only so much I can do. You're calling for uh, your second ace of the round, and no one's going to see it. We didn't see the first one already due to the way the hole is shaped. Yeah. <laughs> Double G needs to throw this in to save the par. No. So girthy. 52 holes of clean golf. Now, the streak about to be broken, but a birdie for Nick. From way deep. Jared. Double G for the bogey. And it's short. So he'll skip the bogey and put a double bogey on his scorecard. His only over par hole through 53 holes. AJ, on the other hand, says, I don't mind racking up yet another birdie, trying to secure second place. Seeing the likes of Gavin Rathbun, a previous Cho champion, shooting a pretty good score. Double G's brother, Evan, also having himself a day out there today. And we move on to our final hole of competition. Big thanks to the Distinguished Doodle for supporting me and all of my disc golf coverage. I think there's a DG Guy code out there. If you need it, let me know. We might be able to get it in the description. Final hole, Double G told us in the opening round that he'd go after the Eagle here on Sunday. I'm gonna hold him to it. Oh, and Nick launches that one, never giving a chance to hook back up and gonna be out of bounds. Nick, one out in front of Jared. And AJ, solid drive. AJ at this point is looking pretty clear for a second place finish. As long as he doesn't do anything too dumb or crazy, should be able to lock it in. That's where he finished in 2022. Double G, time to go big. Oh, and he puts the move on this. <laughs> oh, and sure enough, there is a tiny patch of inbounds that's over there. So he's cleared all of the OB, and then there's just a little tiny spot where it jets out, and that's where Double G has landed. See, right there is where it kind of widens, and Double G is going to be able to put himself up onto the 18th green. He doesn't need the birdie. He's sitting on a pretty comfortable lead. He's got nine as of right now on AJ. AJ, though, only to circle's edge. This is Nick to say par. Like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. AJ, I don't know what things he's doing. I guess playing for rating at this point. He's well ahead of third, not catching first, 
almost throwing it in the water, <laughs> then second-guessing some of his life choices. Double G, your 2022 champion here at the Chainhawk Open, three-time champ, lines up on the final hole, and with that becomes a four-time champion here at the Chainhawk Open. Incredible. He's won the event a third of the time it's been offered. Those are some pretty good odds. As I said, like, share, subscribe. Thank you to everyone that's been part of this weekend and the coverage. Your, the Chainhawks have been uh, nothing but amazing hosts for our players. Appreciate all the sponsors, all my Patreon subscribers. And that's going to wrap it up. We're going to hear a quick word from Double G. He was just speaking from the heart. Let's listen in. That's your 2023 Chainhawk Open presented by Dynamic Discs. Looking forward to catching you guys at the next one. Thank you all for coming. Announcing the 12th, 12th annual Chainhawk Open winner, Mr. Garrett, Double G Gerthy, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Woo! fellow chain hawks out here that were with me and supported me this weekend i gotta thank noel for an awesome trophy uh i mean being engaged uh, uh four or five months now me and jessica's first win together so it's not always downhill or there's always uphill so um you know what i mean i want to thank everyone innova champion dis thanks everyone I'm, I'm just a little speechless right now it's been a while since i've been home and uh it's nice seeing all, a, lot, a lot of familiar faces, and ever since I was two years old, I've been coming out here and trying to work my butt off to become a top pro, and uh, I'd like to say that started right here in Gainesville, so thank you again, everybody, for coming out. Go. Another big shout out to Ryan, which is gonna be getting in the water. He was my caddy this week, and he's gonna be getting in the water. Anyone that has discs, go see Ryan. He's gonna be getting them out, so. Thanks again, Chainhawks rule.